Hello everyone. Today we're gonna learn very simple but very popular um, design pattern called the observer pattern. Um, first we'll go over um, some simple diagrams and then further we we'll dive in into more details. All right, let's start. So let's say we have a component. Uh, in this case, we call it subject that changes its state from let's say one, then becomes two becomes three um, so then let's say this subject is so interesting that some other objects in this case we call them listeners uh, or observers uh, would like to know the state of the subject every time it changes so for example let's say the state of the subject changes to four uh, every observer would like to know oh, okay this is a new state of a subject we want to be notified that subject state now is four and they might do something else you know later on um, so this is basically the observer pattern in a very high level um, so now let's dive in deeper and see how it looks on some real world example so hey let's look at the popular architecture for a financial institution that will trade stocks in the US um, in the US we have a couple of popular exchanges like NYSE, NASDAQ and BATS um, they all um, <coughs> data in different formats like some of them quote fixed some of them binary um, <clears throat> so as a financial institution what you have to do is to connect to all of the exchanges and then convert that <clears throat> binary format you have to deserialize it and put it in a message that your fund can understand that your traders can understand so basically you're just listening here on through UDP data and then you just convert it here um, so then your traders can just subscribe to your data and listen to all the sticks in the standardized format. So for example, here we have a John listening for the, for the, for the tape that comes from the, from the market data process. So now let's say if David wants to, wants to um, subscribe to a data, right? All you have to do is just send the request to the market data process and say, hey, I want to subscribe. So then market data process will send it back data to David. Um, then let's say Lisa wants to subscribe. Lisa sends a request, say, hey, I want to listen to data as well. Um, then it sends it back data. Um, and so the only the, the only time the market data sends the data to all the traders is when the, it receives new tick from the exchange. That means when the state changes. Uh, there could be ways where market data doesn't always like you know doesn't send data on every tick from exchanges it might do some like logic in there say hey my state doesn't change if if i don't get like three ticks or something but every time the state of the subject changes yes they have to send the state back to the traders i mean also let's say david doesn't want to listen to this market data anymore it thinks like it doesn't send the right data so he says he sends the request saying hey like you know i want to unsubscribe so then, okay, the market data says, okay, I'm not going to send you data anymore. So then David doesn't listen anymore. Um, so you can subscribe and you can unsubscribe from the market data. Now let's look at the interface of our uh, uh, market data and the trader. Um, again, the market data is our subject right here. And our trader is observer. Uh, market data keeps track of... Uh, as you can see here, it keeps track of every trader that be subscribed to it. He has to do that. So every time the trader calls the registered trader, it basically the market data adds the trader to its trader list. And then when the state changes of the market data, um, the market data will call update function on every trader it has and will pass the data that it needs to pass. So in this case, we assume bid and ask. Um, so let's say if, if market data receives new bid, it will call this function and we'll set the data up with it. Um, the trader, one is not interested in the data provided by this market data object. You can also call the remove trader to say, hey, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna listen to this data. Um, so let me show you a little bit more extended example for this, a um, little bit better in interface, I think. So. One thing is that could happen is that you might extend your market data to also have this function called like uh, 
get less price, right? Because there is a bid ask and there could be less execution price. Um, if we use our previous design that we saw here, we would have to update this function in every trader to accept bid, ask, and execution, uh, the last price. So in order to avoid that, what we can do, we can actually um, <clears throat> program it in such a way where we can extend our market data only and provide this function get last. But when the state of the market data has been updated, we will pass our market data object itself into the update, the reference to that object. So we'll pass the reference sort of market data to our update function on every trader. And then that trader can call whatever the methods it wants from the market data. So this provides you a little bit more flexibility. Um, so this is the gist of it, really. This is, there is way more we can talk about this pattern, but I think this is the really core that you have to know about it. Um, so if you like the video, please subscribe, like it, and we'll go over more patterns in the next videos. Thank you.